God lead us. See where it takes us. I guess I need to turn this thing on. That's better. They turned this one off. Get rid of that one. Now you can see me. Are you excited? We're going to start a series of messages today. I'm excited. This is the most exciting time. Listen, I'm a pastor. It's what I do. This is my life. <laughs> the other night, I went home. I guess I talked about church for three hours. I think my wife said, are you going to talk about anything else? And I said, honey, this is my life. This is who we are. We are the church. I said, we represent the church. We're the face of the church. We're the pastor and the pastor's wife. It's what we do. I said, it's, I, I, if I'm not excited about it everywhere I go, then the people aren't going to be excited about it. Are you excited about it? Listen, this is the greatest time of the year for a pastor, for a pastor to get into the Word of God because we get to talk about Jesus. We get to brag about Jesus for a while. Man, we can cry and, and weep and yell and spit. Man, we get excited. It's an exciting time. It's who we live for. It's what we are. It's who we, this whole church is built on the blood of Jesus Christ from Genesis to Revolution. You'll get that later. The Easter experience. Take your Bibles. Book of John. John, St. John. Verse, uh, chapter 19. Okay? And we're just going to do two verses this morning. And we're going to start in this series of messages for six weeks, okay? For the next six weeks. That's what we're going to do. We're going to walk through the story all the way. And then, of course, we know on Easter Sunday where we're going to be. It'll be the best story of all. Conquering of death. Aren't you glad this morning that when you die, that you're going to be in the presence of Jesus Christ? Yes. Aren't you, isn't that a great promise? I don't know about you, but I've kind of been close a couple times, and I came back, and I'm glad to still be here. But you know what? That's a great promise. There is so much peace. There's, there's no suffering. Everything is gone. Listen, you just don't even, all you know is that you're in the presence of the Lord. You're just going somewhere that you're not here. And there's no more burdens. The burdens of life are lifted up off of your shoulders. And there's nothing that you even, there's no cares of the world. There's no sorrow. There's no nothing except the peace of Jesus Christ. I know. I did it. And then all of a sudden, I was back. What an experience. I just wonder sometimes if we could all go to hell for 30 seconds. That would change our lives. And then wake up from hell after 30 seconds and go, is it really that bad? Yeah, it is. John chapter 19, the story this morning, he was dismissed by the soldiers. Where we're going to start. He was dismissed by the soldiers. Chapter 19, two verses. Verse 23 and verse 24. I know you've heard this before, but <laughs> that's the whole message. That's what the whole message is about. Because we've heard this before, and we're so immune to it that we're bored. Please don't come to church this morning and be bored. Let's get tuned in to God this morning. Let's get ready to meet with the Lord this morning. Let's let the, the Holy Spirit of God, let the fire of God come down on our heads. Amen. Let's get ready to get ready to be with God this morning. It's the Word of God. It's the bread of life. Let's, let's, let's read the Scripture. Then the soldiers. There they are. When they had crucified Jesus. Does that just kind of stir you up right there? It's kind of get you sad when they had crucified Jesus. Took his garment, made four parts. To every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, therefore, among themselves. Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be? 
that the scripture might be fulfilled which saith, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture did they cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. What's that word, therefore? That, this story is there for a reason. Because we have gotten so tired of hearing the story of Jesus. We've heard it so many times since we were little. Many of us, not all of us, but many of us. That it becomes boring to us. And we're bored. And we're sitting in the pew playing with our phones. Playing with our thumbs. Doing all kinds of things. Writing notes to each other. Uh, just not pay, generally not paying attention at all to that old fat preacher up in the pulpit. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for sending some young men to our church. It's changed my heart. Stirred me up, gave me strength, do the work that needs done. We have so much work to do, we haven't even started. Oh Lord, the most important part is today, right now, this morning, this message, this place, these people that are gathered here. They're the most special, precious people that you gave me to preach to in the next few minutes. Let this message be absolutely a blessing. Absolutely stir our hearts. Convict our hearts. Change our hearts. That, the, that your altars might be full here this morning. People. Getting right with Lord Jesus Christ, every one of us, every single person in this building has issues, problems in our lives, and family things, and, and, uh, and all kinds of, of, of physical things, traumas, and surgeries, things going on. Lord, help. Amen. Amen. Excuse me. I, I want to be able to see for a moment. I'm not apologizing for my tears. I just want to be able to see, okay? Nobody even noticed I got new glasses because my eyes are getting worse. My wife and I got new glasses two weeks ago and she came to church and she said, nobody even said a word. And I said, I know, isn't that great? They didn't even know. See? Are you paying attention? This morning, people dismiss Jesus for the same reason that the soldiers dismissed him on that first Easter weekend. I wonder what Jesus thought. I wondered this. As he looked down at his bloody feet nailed to the cross. By then, his vision was blurred, not from just the pain, but the blood and the sweat that was running down his face into his eyes that he could not wipe. Watching those soldiers Gambling for his clothes. What he thought. In that painful, lonely, and desperate moment of his life as he hung on the cross for six hours on that Friday, what did he see? What did he hear? What did he experience that first Easter? What he witnessed was a number of people around the cross who, whether they knew it or not, were answering life's most important question. There was a number of different responses. We, we often still choose these responses today as we each answer what is life's most important question. And here it is. 
What are you going to do with this Jesus? What are they going to do with him? Perhaps the first people Jesus saw were the soldiers who kneeled them to the cross. You know what he saw them doing? Playing Scrabble. Marbles and dice and gambling with currency for his clothes. Right below him. As he was struggling, one more Just one more They weren't concerned with what was happening on the cross above them. They could care less. What was Listen, there was a man hanging on a cross, dying right above them. They didn't care. Why? You ever ask yourself why? What, how could those men sit there and let a man just, just be gurgling? Listen. He was dying. Do you get it? They were just sitting there. Well, he was just another criminal, just another Jewish rebel. And they gambled some old used clothes worn by a carpenter's son who claimed to be the king. This guy claims to be a king, Brian. What is wrong with this guy? This is, there's a some heretic up here hanging. We don't care. Man, look at this. Look at this seamless robe. We're, look, this is a nice piece. We'll gamble for that. We'll check that out, man, and we'll just throw some dice. And 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 whoever whoever has the the highest number, we'll go take that home with us. So the most significant event in human history was taking place, and they are completely oblivious. As we are in church so many times, we come to church, we hear the Word of God, we open the Word of God, we preach the Word of God, and the man of God has prayed up, stayed up, and, 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 and got right with God, and got on his knees, and, and, and asked God to come and do something in the hearts of the people, and he's ready to go, and he's ready to preach, and he's ready to give his heart to the man. And we're sitting there, and we're on our stinking Facebook. Truth, come on, tell let's go. Don't be afraid. Those men were under the cross, oblivious of what was happening. Above them. Yes. So many times in church, we're oblivious. If God, if Jesus Christ Himself shows up to preach the Word of God in the church of God, in a Baptist church, you guys wouldn't even know that He came. Some of us, some of you get excited. You meet me at the door. We met with the Lord today, Pastor. Thank you for that message. And I always say, God did it. Not me. They were oblivious. Are you bored when you come to church? Number one. Yeah, that was just the introduction. Don't worry, we'll be out by three. I have leftovers in my refrigerator, so I don't care. Number one, they had seen all this before. Come to church. Man, I've seen the back. I've been in Baptist churches all my life. I've seen it all. I know it all. I don't, I, there's nothing that I need to know. I'm just going to go wander all over the building. I'll go wander in the parking lot and make sure that everything's okay. I might have to shoot somebody, but it will be all right. Have you ever thought about just seeing what God's going to do? Yes. Have you ever thought about just sitting there and get under the preaching of the Word of God and listen? It is not about me. Listen, I am nobody. Forget about me. It's about God. There's a kind of law of familiarity in life that states, no matter how valuable, given enough time, everything will be taken for granted. You're just going to take it for granted. Come to church. You just do the same thing. That was true for the soldiers. 
as they came to carry out a crucifixion. Death by crucifixion in the first century, amen? In the book of Crucifixion by Martin Hengel, he reports that during Titus' siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD, 500 people a day were whipped, tortured, and crucified outside the walls of the city in hopes that the gruesome sight of all these people dying, well, the people inside would quit and give up. Titus. 500 people a day. Tortured, abused, hung on a cross on the road into Jerusalem. You can stand on the wall and see them lined up. Your relatives. Are you bored this morning? Did you come to church this morning to see what the Lord's doing? Just another day at work. Soldiers at the bottom of the cross. They were so used to it. It was their job. They were so used to torturing people. You know, somebody had to do it. So, you know, these guys, they, they get paid pretty well. You know, uh, there's the, you, some, by the way, some of the worst professions in the world, they pay pretty good, amen? That one of them towers that goes all the way up into the space where they get up and they go all to the top and change the light bulb, they get paid really good to go up there, not me. These guys were paid pretty well to kill people. And they were paid so well. And by the way, they hated the Jews. And the Jews hated them. No big deal. We're just killing another dog. Let's, just kill, let's kill the dogs today. Hey, we get to kill another. Let's think about it. They woke up that morning. Hey, we get to go kill somebody today. Something wrong with that picture. You know why Heinrich Himmler came up with the idea to gas the Jews in World War II? You know, how, you know how that came about? They were getting so many Russians and Jews, so many people that they hated, they wanted dead, that the uh, army officers, the corps that they, they had that was killing people, they would, they would take their rifles, they would line up all these people, and they put them in a, along this big ditch, and they'd just go... <laughs> and you know what? They decided they're wasting too many bullets. Not only that, the guys were going home at night. They were they were they were they were falling apart. They were killing all these people. They were fall, so they didn't want to, they didn't want to know about it. They came up with the idea to gas them. They get them in there naked, throw them in there, close the door. Just a bunch of dogs. They didn't have to look at them. And then they sent the Jews in there. They'd, they'd make them clean up the mess. It was just another day at the office, man. Think about how people get. get so bored. We get so, listen to me. We are so dumbed down and so used to the story of Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we don't even get excited about going to church anymore. We don't even get excited when the pastor says, man, we're going to have the Easter experience. Oh, there's that again. Those of us that get excited about the Bible, we go, oh, there's that again. That's why Heinrich Kemper came up with that idea. Another day at the office. So many resources being tied up. They decided that that was a better way to do it. So here's the problem today. Jesus' crucifixion was so commonplace, so familiar, these guys could care less. Oh well, another dog. Are you are you dead yet? They were so into what they were doing, so into killing, they didn't even know that the king of the universe was hanging right above their head. Perhaps uh, we get familiar with some things. We call out the old hymn and we say, hey, let's sing hymn number 112. There's a fountain 
filled with blood, and in our minds, we can sing every word in the hymn. We go, oh yeah, let's sing that again. Have you ever thought about the words? My prayer this morning is that we'll be enabled to look at the cross of Christ in such a way that we'll be drawn to it freshly. It'll be a fresh, it'll be a fresh story this year. It'll be fresh in our minds and in our hearts. It will understand how terrible it was. We'll understand that He died for us. We'll understand that because He died, you don't have to die. Listen, go ahead and die one time and come back. It'll get your attention. I mean, I've got, if I, I could come down here and amen myself if you want me to. I mean, I can do that. Every once in a while, Brian yells out a little bit. He's getting excited this morning, amen. But listen, we need, to, we need to get excited about this story. Number two, how sad is this? They were turned off by God's people. Write it down. That's good. They were turned off by God's people. The Romans hated the Jews. The Romans hated being in Palestine. It was kind of like sending the, the army and the air force over to Iraq. I mean, you know what we say? We're going to kill some towel heads. what they say? I'm not making that up. The old towel heads. Desert rats. Go kill them. And we can come home and be with our family. We get, there's just another, there's just another uh, group of killers. I realize that's a pretty hard bunch. But we, get immune, but we get immune to that, see? We get used to that. We get used to, okay, let's just go kill them. I hear it on, on TV all the time. Well, the only thing you can do with those Arabs is just kill them. The Jews were proud, independent people who didn't, didn't care. They didn't want to be under the oppression of the Romans. Chances are, because of how they felt toward the Jews, the soldiers relished. They were happy. They were excited to kill a Jew. God's people nothing but a bunch of Legalists. Oh, listen, Baptist folks, this morning. We need to get some compassion back. Yes. We need to get some tears again. Yes. We, need to, we need to fall in love with people, people that are broken. You know what? You get broken people in here, don't worry about the way, uh, if, they, if they don't look like you do. Don't worry about it. Uh, I, I, thought, I thought that this morning, you know. I, I hope I wasn't overdressed. I, I'm not trying to do that to you, Brother uh, Daryl. Uh, I'm just glad to pick you up, brother. Listen, I just want people to come. I just want them to come and be here. I just want to be a blessing to them. Listen, I don't care. Just come. Just put some clothes on. Just throw them on and come into the house of God. Amen. That's how it's supposed to be. That's what Jesus did. That's what he liked. He loved people. He didn't care if you were an adulterer. He didn't care if you were a prostitute. He didn't care about if you were a tax collector. He didn't care if you were a, a, a rotten person at all. Truth, come on, de- you are, some of you are demoniacs. Yeah. I bet you. Demon. What happened? Oh, Lord, please don't do that. No, 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 send us away. No, 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 no. They knew who he was. Do we? They were turned off by God's people. You know the number one answer why people don't go to church was that, that when you ask people, they say church is boring. Why would I go to that church? It's boring. It's so boring. Number two, second thing they always say, I don't really like the way that people act. They don't treat me right. So I can't be with I can't be there. I can't go, I can't go to a church like that. Oh, that's one of them. 
KJV only churches. You know, we got a bad rap about that. That's a bad rap. People see that. Oh, those are a bunch of judgmental, pug faced people. Man, they they just, all they do is go their pug face. You know, they walk around like this and they glue to themselves and they can't. That's what people say. We just need to point people to Jesus. Yes, that's where it's at. Come on. Maybe you this morning have shut shut the Lord out and shut me out. Shut this whole shut this whole message out because you have been exploited by a Christian person. I work with a guy. He was the head deacon. He was married to a beautiful lady. He had a beautiful daughter. He was. Doing very well. Every time a beautiful woman, not quite dressed like she should be, he'd run up there. Hey, everybody! Come on, let's stare at this woman! I went. Finally, he hated me. Finally, one day I said, Jim, you know, when you fall, these people all know that you go to church. They all know that you're like a, an authority of some board or whatever on your church people. And you're going to fall down and you're going you're gonna to mess up and they're going to be right there to make, point their finger at you and say, look what, look what this guy does. Maybe this morning you had a, a, a Christian person and they, they exploited you for money. Look at, you ever had, I'm a Christian businessman. Have you heard that? <laughs> You know what most people say? I'm a Christian businessman. You go, man, I don't want to go there. He'll take, he'll take me to the cleaner. That's sad. The Roman soldiers had no idea. They had absolutely no clue who was hanging above them. They hated the Jews. They hated them so bad that they were ready, hope, hoping that he would die faster. So I could go home be with my kids and eat my dinner and go to bed. Are you done yet? I got, I got, I got a, a restaurant. I got coupons. I'm ready to go. I got a little group of people. They're going with me. We're going to have a great time of fellowship. We're going to have a great dinner. Are you done yet? so sad. They had no idea. Number three. These guys, these soldiers, number three. They were focused on other things. It's like we get. Instead of being focused on Jesus, the soldiers were caught up with who would win the garment. Let's see who wins the garment. Let's see what we can get. We're sitting in our pew. Let's see who we can talk to on Facebook. Let's, let's, let's play with our phone. Let's write notes. Let's, uh, hey, look, there's, there's cool stuff here in the pew. Let's play with that for a while. I know. I used to do it. My wife used to wake me up. The guy was so boring. He never. He was monotone. He talked like this. Never, re never raised his voice. He was so soothing. Lights were turned low. Temperature was nice. The pew was soft. And man, I was tired. I worked all week, and I sat down, and she was sitting there. And she'd go, oh. I, oh, is it invitation yet? <laughs> I remember one time I fell asleep when I was a little kid. My dad made us sit on the front row. He, my dad sat on the front row because he couldn't hear very well. Now I know why. I can't hear very well anymore either. He always sat on the front row because he couldn't hear very good. He loved to hear the preacher. He loved, man, listen, I get this natural, man. 
My dad sat in the very, he sat so close, he wanted to sit on top of the preacher's toes. He wanted to be right there. And by the way, back in them time, back in them time, those preachers, they were like a, a, a caged animal. They had this cord. They, they'd run up until the cord ran out, and then they'd have to run back. Remember those days, brother? Amen. They didn't have wireless. Some of you remember these days. Well, and so dad sitting there, we were sitting there. I fell asleep. And I don't know what happened. All I know is that he belted out something really loud and went, ah! And I went, boom! Kicked the pew, for, I about kicked it off. And all of a sudden, everybody's silence in the church. And I woke up and everybody was looking at me. Oh, no. My mom and dad were. They were focused on other things. What are you focused on this morning? Missionary family who was getting expelled from China during the communist revolution. They were under house arrest. And they were waiting on when the, to hear word of when they can go back to America. A Chinese soldier came in and said they could go back to America, but they were allowed to take only 200 pounds with them. Listen very carefully. Phones away. Listen. The husband, wife, and two kids did their best to decide what was the best to take back. The wife, she wanted to take the sewing machine. The husband, his preacher, he wanted to take his books. The kids want to take their toys. Well, they argued a while and they took this off and they took that off and they did this and they did that. And finally, Finally, but they didn't all agree. They, fit, they thought they had 200 pounds. Later that day, the soldier asked them if they were ready to go. They said, yes. The soldier said, did you weigh everything? They said, yes. He said, did you weigh the kids? All of a sudden, Things of this world became unimportant. Got it? Get it? Get it? Got it? See what I'm talking about? Are your kids important? Are your grandkids important? Are they going to die and go to hell? Are they sitting at sitting somewhere at a foot of a cross somewhere, and they don't even know that the Lord Jesus Christ is dying right above their heads. They're oblivious. They have no idea. And they're just saying, well, let's just uh, play another game. Let's just have some more fun. Let's just do some more stuff. Hey, we'll go to Kings Island this Sunday. Just another day at church. Brother Keen is so boring. All he does is cry and yell a little bit. Can you hear the sound of Jesus trying to catch his breath? Love you. While we waste more time doing nothing for the Lord with our life. Can you hear it? Can you hear him? Bit blood. <laughs> Takes one more breath. Just one more breath. Are you dead yet? Are you done yet, Preacher Keen? I'm awful hungry. If 
Bible says, 1 Corinthians 15, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He rose again the third day, according. Now, thank God, Brother Savage, I must say, this is the rest of the story. Paul Harvey said, I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. There was just one. One man. Looked up, said, surely, that was the Son of God. Are you that one? Everybody around is all oblivious. They're all dying and going to hell. But maybe you're the one. You're that one guy, you're that one gal. You kind of figured it out. And you, you broke your heart. And you got saved. The Bible says. Centurion got saved that day. Just one. If the Lord Jesus Christ came and died, rose again, and just one person gets saved, it will have been worth it all. You know why? I was that one in a Christian school, walking around, not saved, hearing to pre preach to every, I was preached to five times a day. <laughs> oh, here it is again. Until one day, I heard it. I heard it loud and clear. I knelt in that cafeteria. Nobody around. Just me and God. I said, I give it. And I waved the white flag. I said, Lord, you know. Are you oblivious? Just another season? Oh, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt. Oh, isn't that cool? Man, my little kiddos are going to have such a great time. And that's true. And I'm glad for it. Amen. I'm excited for Hunter, man. I want to see Hunter and Landon and Matthew and all the boys. I want to see them go out there and just and go home and eat 10 pounds of chocolate and run all over the block. Man, that's awesome. That is awesome. But that's not what Easter is all about, folks. That's the truth. That's the fun part. Is it just another Easter? Now, we're going to do this for six weeks. This is number one. <coughs> Don't miss one of them, please. You'll miss out on something. We're going to walk through this whole thing. Okay? Today... Talk about the Roman soldiers. Next week, we'll talk about somebody else. What about you? Did the Lord speak to your heart today? It's not about me. I'm just an old fat dude, man. I got old and fat. I don't know what happened. I woke up one morning, 
man, I gained 40, 50 pounds. And my wife said, you're fat. I said, thank you. So are you. She goes, yeah, but you're fatter. That's on tape. Don't worry about what I, don't worry about me. Is it just another story? Is it just another Easter? Or did you meet with the Lord today? Let's all stand. We're going to have a hymn invitation. Chris is coming up. Sylvia's coming. Charlie's coming. All the, all the musicians, piano players, everybody. We're going to turn somewhere. We're going to turn somewhere. 177. I surrender all. 177. I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in Look. His service. Come on. Altar open. God's people. I surrender all.